Welcome back, everybody, to the adventures of the recently resurrected Boris Donati Mog von Archbold of the Byzantine Empire. Yesterday, a couple of people were upset about me uh, bringing this guy back and not committing full blown to the to the count character that we basically accidentally kind of set up for ourselves yesterday. For those of you who were upset about that, I'm going to give you the 100% very official Roll 1D2 games guarantee that by the end of this episode, we'll have some land. Trust me on that one. But I kind of want to justify a little bit in that it took one character to go from being a complete nobody to a landed noble. Oh, we can't check with this character, can we? Because he's, uh, where was our, where we landed last time? Oh my god, he's a duke! Okay, well, this is about to compound exactly what I was talking about. We went from this guy, obviously the original Archbold Lord wins Flipper Tofty, a landless nobody, like a complete low bottom tier. Remember, this was a guy with no stats, no traits, no education, no land, no nothing. In one character, we went from him to a count. And I felt it was way too easy, particularly when the whole point of the series is to be, you know, obviously messing around as an unlanded character here, seeing what adventures we get up to a little bit. Um, to go in one character to already be in that, and then, not only that, but this guy, since they're being a fucking duke, kind of defeated the whole point of the series. So I, I, I know a lot of people are enjoying the unlanded side of things, and I definitely am enjoying the, the unlanded side of things. I want to experience what it's like to be a baron as well, because I have some really cool ideas for that, like, you know, specifically going around buying up just the baronies under a load of other people. Imagine like that, assimilate them from the inside, using your domain limit to, say, take 10, 20 different castles across the realm and doing this big uprising from every single province. I thought that'd be kind of cool, but we kind of missed out on that. So that's why I wanted to go back to playing as an unlanded character for a little bit. But don't worry, by the end of today, I'm sure we'll have some land as well, seeing as, again, with Boris Doddity, we basically started with nothing, and now we are once again a nobleman out of nowhere. So we could potentially try and buy ourselves some land very, very soon. Let's just carry on as as, as usual then. And uh, Oh, another thing I want to talk about very briefly is, for those of you who are new to the channel, there is a, a Series B, which is what you're watching now, which is uh, kind of a bit more realistic, based in Europe slash Asia. Basic CK2 map with some of, the, some of the mods based on that, though. Series A is focused more on the fantasy side of things. The total conversions like the Elder Kings, uh, which is obviously the Elder Scrolls universe, and then Game of Thrones mod for, for you know, a bit more of a fantasy roleplay RPG type thing. So, Series A, I don't want to overdo the landed, the unlanded playthrough, but I'm really liking it. I think a lot of you guys are too, at least based on the numbers. So, I'm thinking maybe we kind of take up some of this unlanded stuff and maybe try and go into one of those worlds with it. Now, this mod in particular is, is made for base game CK2, so it would be a case of me throwing something together myself, which shouldn't be too difficult, I don't think. Um... If people are interested in that, let me know. Because obviously I don't want to commit to quite a sizable mod if, you know, it's just going to be a kind of a flash in the pan type thing. But let me know on that one. I've already spoken to a couple of people about potentially putting together a little team for it as well. Because uh, this landless mod is, is not really compatible with too many other things. It's a total conversion in itself. Definitely check this one out though because it's, it's incredibly well made. Mine would not be this thorough. But, you know, by going into those other worlds, we've already got access to so much other weird stuff anyway that uh, wouldn't, we wouldn't necessarily need to flash out as much as this one has. But yeah, let me know if you're interested in that. Either out of Kings, Game of Thrones or, or something else. Give me a heads up. Let's get back to the adventures then of, of my good man, Boris. So, we can buy a mansion first and foremost. Absolutely do it. Where did we get all this gold from? We had like 300 gold. What the fuck? What did I do last time? Oh my god, I killed that guy in the jewel, didn't I? We killed like two people in the bounty hunting and got a shitload of cash for it. Hey, that's nice. Okay, so now we can buy the mansion, buy the farmland, buy a shrine, buy a wall, buy a mine. Holy shit, buy a garden. We're already like the top tier of the unlanded nobles already. That's so good. My god. In no time at all, with a couple more campaigns, you know, obviously sticking with our cell sword work, whatever else. Oh, oh, and we're being trained as well, aren't we? Right, okay, got it. Um, followers advice, gain stubborn. We do want to be a, a, a trained character a bit more, you know, it'll help. Although we've already maxed out a brilliant strategist, we can go for higher levels of things like fighting skill, which I believe gives us more health, doesn't it, at the higher levels? Don't remember. A uh, woman by the name of Euphrasia is looking for someone to deliver goods to Guildmaster Sh Shishek in Odessa, I think is how you say that. Um... We can make the delivery, but we we do go there, don't forget. So Su Sultan uh, Kutlug there becomes our new lead. Who is Sultan Kutlug? Oh, he's Seljuk in Room. That could be interesting, bearing in mind that obviously, you know, endgame goal once again is being the king of Jerusalem. Apparently, we almost succeeded with that in two characters, given that this guy's already a duke in Ascalon, which is pretty fucking nuts. Um, that'd be interesting. Maybe leave the Byzantine Empire and go for the much more stable room. I'm pretty sure they're quite weak right now, though, aren't they? Yeah, they're getting their ass handed to them by just about everybody. Um... Also in charge of Jerusalem. I could be persuaded. Yeah, I definitely could be persuaded. Bear in mind that the, 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 speaking of persuading, all this effort we've gone to try and win the Basilius ever hasn't really worked too well, I'll be honest. Uh, professional touch, softened, foreigner, infidel, whatever, isn't really working out too well. And it's certainly no different than it would be if we moved over to the different realm and started again there. I'm, I'm, I'm up for it, yeah. Plus look at the amount of gold we can make as well, by the way. 9% chance of 50 gold, somewhere between 35 and 50 gold. Give me that. Give me that. If we have to move across to room, that's fine by me. 
Oh my god, we got Brave. Oh my god, no, 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 that's not even from the final event. We got Brave from the event before this one. I didn't even notice. So now we also get Train Fighter 2. Fuck me, that's so good. Okay, so that gives us, that gives us health yet. No, 0.5 month prestige though is pretty good. And plus 20 personal combat. Brave on top of that is fantastic. Again, it's a real, real shame that this guy is not like a duke in a regular CK2 campaign or something. Because we've already turned him into uh, a, just an incredible martial character here. Ambitious, just, kind, brave, gregarious. He's got so many incredible traits. My god. I hope that he is doing well. Not anymore, I don't. Sorry. You, t you turned your back on us for too long, my friend. Get out. We have a new... Uh, friendship ended with the Basilius. Sultan Kutlug is my new best friend. Oh, we can't yet because we're away from court. We're actually traveling over to his realm, right? While we've been traveling over there, our son has come of age to receive an education and he's garbage. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, best education, martial or intrigue in this scenario. Uh, well, technically learning, but I'm not going to educate him in learning. Let's be reasonable. I feel like martial is the best bet, especially given our character is, is extremely skilled at martial at this stage. It would be a shame not to go for that. Uh, oh, right, we've got this guy training, though. The Shrewd and Zealous. Yeah, okay, not terrible. Shrewd gives a bonus to his education. Although, have we got... Yeah, we haven't got Diligent, we haven't got Patient, we haven't got... Oh, actually, we've got Dull, which actively works against Educated Child, so we're not going to do that one. Fine, all right. Tricking the martial education, then. Let's see how he comes out. Acquaintance, Francois Diapiano died. Also a good name. I'm really glad they are sticking to the naming scheme there. Oh, my God, they've become French Catholics. What? You madman. He's, he's turned his back on our, on our dynasty entirely. The French Catholics, he's got his duchy in Jerusalem, but what did it cost him? I mean, absolutely everything. Uh, Great system did not favor the Muslim faithful. After string defeats, they failed to take... Oh, that's interesting. So they're, they're kind of going for the Reconquista there. Um, to, for what it's worth. Yeah, how the hell did they lose that? Wait, what? Maybe the Aztecs dealt them a, a blow or something like that? Anyway. Um, oh, it's probably over Egypt, more likely. Okay, fair enough. Look, geopolitics at this stage is a complete mess. You've got, like, Carpathia and Harthia. We've got Norway's taking over most of Scandinavia. We've, uh, that, Yeah, the, the Kingdom of Egypt-Aragorn combo is still going there up in Denmark, too. Oh, and by the way, London is now Aztec. Yeah, fine. So the move to Odessa is complete, man. Oh, that's that's where his capital is. That's quite cool. Um, we are now officially in Odessa, and we have met a man who has offered us a job as a server. I assume, like, a... Uh, what, like a butler or like a, like a waiter? I'm going to accept the offer either way because we haven't got any other sort of employment yet. We do need to work away at the social ladder. Never mind. We're a commander again. That's so cool. Okay. And my good Seljuk friend. Oh, he doesn't like us. Uh, foreigner zealous infidel. Uh, maybe his, maybe his successor will be a bit kinder. Uh, sort of. Diligent, gregarious. I mean, he doesn't like us. Uh, doesn't dislike us. Both great, both gregarious. Okay, that's a little bit better. What if we send this guy a gift early? Give him an artifact. Give him my sword. Get out of here. Oh, the sword. How did I forget about that? So there are some incredibly good names recommended for this one. All right, so the top comment from Handsome Thanos. Shout out to Handsome Thanos. Says, name the sword Extreme Testosterone. Firstly, because the character in the series was supposed to have that name. That's true. That was our first character, obviously, when we failed the first attempt here. Secondly, when you hover over your martial or personal comment, it'll say plus one, plus seven from Extreme Testosterone. All right, fair enough. I agree. And if there's anyone, it's Boris Doddity, Mog von Archibald, who went from nothing up to extreme high T levels of Marshall there. <laughs> All according to plan. Old age minus 15, but extreme testosterone plus 7 to his personal combat. 72 personal combat as well. Hang on, we could be like a legitimate bounty hunter now. Because we've got that trained fighter skill, along with being brave as well, which I didn't even take into account the personal combat. We could genuinely kick some ass and make a lot of money out of it. Let's do it. Uh, check the bounce board. What have we got? It's got Mayor Hossen, because we're in a different part of the world. They're obviously in different targets as well now. Um, 11 personal combat. I'm sure we could annihilate him. Minus 7. We could fight this 37-year-old leper. No, that's not leper. That's great pox. Well, either way, I think we probably got it in the bag. Um, you got to assume she's worth a higher bounty. I think it is a flat 100, but she's a duke, so I'm going to go for her first. Ah, she's offering a 66 gold to not kill her dead. But we probably want the prestige, right? So that we can try and become adopted into our house again like we were last time. Uh, I will only accept payment in blood or we skip the jewel engine. To be honest, we did so well with the jewel engine last time. I'm, I'm going for it. I think we probably got it in the bag anyway, right? I'm not sure this takes your personal combat into account though, does it? Because the other option, when you hover over it, the tool tip does say takes into account personal combat, some other things too. Not sure. Your enemy is in front of you, looking directly at you and getting ready to receive your attack. That doesn't seem, doesn't seem very sensible. Uh, d hit the head. You should have gone for that. Uh, actually, we can just straight up aim for the head instead. Yeah, you know what? Boom. She tries to parry your attack, but failed miserably. Get fucking roasted. What are you doing? Bruised head. Nice. How do you bruise? <laughs> okay. You know what? I'm not going to question it. All right. Uh, she's already lightly bruised. Let's do... What? I mean, it's driving an attack. That one there. So you see it says uh, your score chance. That's apparently just for the jewels when you rank up in the society, which we could do, by the way. Oh, we could even just bypass it and go straight for it. Um, just to, like, impress the judges. But in a regular duel, it's never worse. Apparently, we'd just always do the quick and simple attack. We are just kicking this poor fucking woman's ass. Oh, my God. We're annihilating her. Um, 
Okay, parry. We missed. We didn't hit her back, though. Not a problem. Jump attack. Oh, they're always practical and cool, right? Tried to parry attack and failed. I kind of feel bad. I do genuinely just feel really bad for her right here. Oh, God. Oh, God. This this does go on for quite some time. This is why I normally try and skip it, because it does go on for uh, a little bit of a while, I will admit. Uh, oh, Christ. What was that? She screamed twice in a row, then. She's gone. Victory is yours. Your foe has yielded and baked the spare of dear life like the cow she is. Unfortunately, this would mean your bounty was stolen, but it's not glorious. It will pay more money than a head would have paid. So we can take $100 reduce. Sorry, $300. Um, we lose 50 prestige. Now, prestige would let us be adopted into a dynasty, wouldn't it? But to be honest, I think we can buy land if we are a noble from our from our liege. I think there's a system to do that. You can like go to a spare province or title or something and then offer to purchase it. Uh, to be honest, I don't know how that works, because we skipped that step entirely by, at the click of a button, becoming a landed count yesterday. So, I'm not sure how that works. Uh, does he have any spare land? That's the real question. If so, we might want to save up prestige instead. Hello, friend. Uh, what have you got? He doesn't actually have any spare tiles. Okay, fair enough. So, we probably wouldn't be able to do that right now. If there's, like, a duke that has some spare stuff... Oh, this guy. Hello. Uh, we can make this guy a and see if we can offer to buy one of his thousand titles. That could work. What do you think? 300 gold's a lot, isn't it? And prestige is a lot easier to come by than gold, I think, as a... I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it because there's no reason we can't just fight her again. So we can go back to the bounce ball. We can hunt this guy down. I'm going to skip it this time, do you think, based on your combat skill and traits. Obviously, we had that one in the bag. There's 100 prestige right there. So a lot of people are also pointing out that the uh, we can found a holy order and whatever else, but I was told by the dev that it's not as fleshed out as, you know, just playing regular feudal. It's kind of advised against it. Sure, you could do it, but I think, you know, to keep things as interesting as possible, we'll probably stay away from that just based on the dev suggestion. So we're going to stick with our feudal. Oh, can we just buy everything now? Oh, is that it? We're done. Very nice. There's our fully upgraded mansion too, by the way. It gives fertility plus 10%, court size plus 2. We get piety, prestige, and monthly wealth from that. So I'm going to try and move to this guy's court. And was this guy with... Oh, is this guy with all the land, yeah? We're going to move to this guy's court. See if I can find a way to... Be able to buy some land from him. See if we can offer on one of his titles. Okay, so I've done a little research. And it turns out all we need is to be in the court of somebody who has empty holdings. So we're not buying one of their holdings. We're not going to say buy, you know, the Al Wilaya Samin. We don't want that one. We, we buy one of the empty slots and build a new castle there, which makes a lot of sense. Um, so what I've done is I've, I've found this guy here who's a pretty good target for it. It's two empty holding slots there. We've moved down to here. All we have to do now is just say purchase holding. My leads will be willing to grant me a barony as long as I'm willing to pay for it. 600 gold though. So obviously we had that a second ago. I had to move down here. Um, but that's not bad. All we've got to do is fight a couple more duels, kill a couple more people in, in, in combat. We're a landed character. And then, more importantly, we're a landed baron, so we can kind of fly a bit under the radar, you know? Still got ourselves a castle. We can still raise some troops. We can still do all the things landed characters can do. It's going to really open the game to us. But we're not technically a, a, a pro We don't own a province. So it's still going to be kind of that weird, semi-landless playthrough. I think that's going to be... I think baron is probably going to be the most fun rank we could go for, because it's going to open the game up. But we've also got all these other weird little options going on as well. So... Okay, so we moved down here then. We've, we've moved slightly south from our previous leads, which was like here or something like that, to the province with the empty holding. Now we've got to do is save a bit of cash. So whenever we get, I was just about to say, whenever we get the option to get employment, whenever we get the option to fight someone on the bounty board, we absolutely need to go for it. Also, I feel like we should customize our house. There's me saying we need to be adopted, but we're already a noble. So what the hell am I talking about? Right, let's go for house... Now, of course, Appiano are our mortal enemies. You know, the, the, the house that adopted our father and then turned its back on us. So, what's the opposite of a piano? That's right. It's house, uh... <laughs> house of saxophone. Is that the opposite? Is that the opposite of piano? Absolutely. You got damn right it is. Is there a saxophone emblem? Uh... I'm going to assume not here, Paradoxus. I'm going to guess that you haven't really... Gonna guess it haven't. What's roughly saxophone shaped then? Okay, you know what? We can't get a saxophone. I'm just gonna go for whatever vaguely looks like. F it's fucking perfect. Tell me that does not look exactly like a saxophone. Boom. House of saxophone. This is fantastic. We are st we're so many steps in the right direction we've taken just from doing that alone. Don't know why I'm talking like Yoda all of a sudden. Do we want to rank up by combat? Now, it'll give us prestige, but because we won't get gold out of that, I kind of want to save any potential dangerous combat situations for if it's going to pay out massively. So we'll kind of hold off on that. I wonder if when we're a baron, we can do China stuff. Because we will be a landed character, but we won't have... Well, we won't have land. We'll just have a, a castle. So I don't know if that still counts. But imagine, I mean, things like that, it's, it's going to be kind of an open door to us from then on. Putting on a bit of the old Boris Doherty, Mog von Archibald, saxophone. Oh, I called him a saxophone, not the saxophone. You know, that's even funnier. 
our saxophone's uh, charm and wit, we're gonna we're gonna send a message to Amiba here saying that his commanders are nothing more than rabble, or brawn, and no fury. You, on the other hand, are an experienced tactician and a great teacher to boot. I think I'm gonna send him up. This could get us absolutely fucking murdered. Um, random Jewish man turns up at court, flaunting his money, you know, claiming to be a better commander than all these other fools. I feel like we're gonna get killed. But you know what? <gasps> no. To my loyal subject, the audacious whip Boris Donaty Monk von Archibald, your offer is most generous. I gratefully accept your offer and remember this good deed in the future. He owes us a fucking favor now. Oh my god. That, my friends, that, my friends, is the landless experience right there. My god, we have really got a foot in the door there. Holy shit. What do I do now then? Um, demand. Oh, tell me this is not worked out fucking perfectly. Move to a new realm. We're now a marshal. Granted, the realm is not a, it's not a it's not a big realm, it's not a particularly rich realm, it's not super powerful, but it's in a nice position. They are fairly stable. They've got allies on both sides. Well, not necessarily here, but you know, if Jerusalem come for us, we have our own enemies there that I'm more than happy to fight. I would die for this country if we see those those damn duh pianos heading towards us. I know what yeah, duh piano heading towards us. I'll take him out. So we're on his council. That's so that's so ridiculous. Okay. So we're now the marshal for this small realm. All we need is a bit more cash then. We're going to be landed too. That's so cool. Okay. Let's wait a little bit more on that. We could go and gamble. We could fight in the arena. To be honest, we're probably in more than safe hands to do that, right? Who are we fighting? 22. Ruprecht. Now, I will point out every time I fought in the arena, we've died. <gasps> oh, my God. I was going to say, if we died there, I'd be livid. The sun is beginning to set when I meet Ruprecht. My extreme testosterone ready. <laughs> Holy fuck. God damn, that's funny, but holy shit, it hurts to laugh when I'm ill. Fucking hell. After he clumsily dodges my attack, my next one lands perfectly. Frantically, the man attempts to cover his injured eye, but I've rarely seen so much blood. I take it, I'll win this fight, or I will show no mercy. We get merciless, giving general opinion minus 10. We don't want to make any enemies here. We're already on thin ice, being like, you know, a religious minority in this realm, you know, not speaking the language, completely different culture as well. We're going to be careful. We'll take the 50 prestige. My god, apparently we can get the gladiator trait if we do this enough. I'd love to see that. I'd love to see finally a good duelist come out of this dynasty of otherwise slain duelists. Violence seems to be able to solve all your problems. You're not wrong. I mean, we did spend our whole life killing people and becoming a gladiator. 26 Marshall. Boris Donaty Mont von Archibald, a saxophone of Halab. Genuinely one of the most impressive characters to build him up completely from scratch again. I'm I'm really impressed by the by by just the combination of skills we managed to pick up here to get him up to the 26 Marshall. Oh shit, there we go. Archibald, hey, not as good as his dad, but certainly not bad. He's got patient, content is not great, zealous is fantastic, brave is fantastic. Charitable, you could argue, is pretty good. Uh, diplomacy plus three, we need all the diplomacy we can get right now. Paranoid, not going to be assassinated anytime soon. We can get rid of content if and when we play as him. Now, of course, we've got to see how our other kids come out. We don't necessarily need to educate. Yeah, we can nominate our daughters as our successor as well. So, if they do better, that's fine. We're going to become a baron anyway, so we can go for matrilineal marriages, and I think I've patched that all together now, so... He's good, but he's not fantastic. But anyway, this character was not fantastic when we started playing as him either. So, huh. Archibald Law wins a flip it off. Junior, the piano is now known as a soldier. He should get rid of that name. That was the name of our late great father. Never as a soldier. What's he up to then? He's got 21 marshal. This character's really good, don't get me wrong. And he's got, has he got more land? He's picked up like two other provinces. He picked up Bashib and Ascalon as well. I guess he's part of his duchy. That's fucking nuts. This guy's doing really well. This is why I'm so glad we went back to this other character. Every time I check on him, I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of happy we flipped back. Because he's like, not only is he a duke, but he's actually becoming quite a powerful duke too. You know, if, if we were in charge of this guy, I think we could have got the kingdom as him. And I think that would have been the end of the campaign right there. Because that was obviously the whole point. Man. Okay, fair enough. Can we fight in the arena? We can get into shape. Come on. Damn. I feel like we've been trying to do that for ages now. But he's never quite seen it. Gamble. Oh, take the option away. Don't make me do it. God damn. I haven't got the willpower for this. You did what, you fuck? What, what did he do? What? Was forced to give counsel position, received offer of guardianship. For, he's got my son in prison. And now he's off 26 gold. This seems like racism right there. Oh, he's branded an apostate. Because he's a different religion. He didn't burn him at the state, though, which is, I mean, generous of him. Holy shit. Because he's Jewish. And, and this is something we do have to concern ourselves with, of course, being a landless character. Um... Christ, okay. I mean, I've got to get him out of there, right? I've got to pay the 26 gold. We don't have a choice here. 
Otherwise, he could just drop down dead, touching the Ubliate. That's the end of him. Brandon Apostate sucks, because that's permanent as well. It's only Piety, which, again, Prestige is more of the important thing here. General Pity minus 10, when we're already in a round with people who don't like us anyway because of our culture and religion. We might even want to take on their culture, but maintain uh, Judaism. To be fair, if we get constantly, you know, if all of our kids are thrown in prison, Brandon Apostate's executed, whatever else, we might want to falsely confess faith and maybe even set up a... Like a secret... Oh my god, hang on, that's a plan. What if we take baronies, like, across the realm, and then create a Jewish secret society? Bear with me on this one. You can send the... You can secretly convert the provinces, or at least set the event modifier, which when you do, you know, your religious uprising thing, will make them convert instantly. I believe you could do that where you've got any land. So I think castles would count towards that. That would be a really interesting strategy. If we play as like a small group, maybe even move into Jerusalem, you know, swear fealty, something like that, maybe swallow up this duchy swear fealty, then from secretly from the inside, try and convert it all to Judaism, do a complete revolt and, and take the whole thing. That would be incredible. That If I could pull that off, that would be awesome. But I think that's going to be incredibly difficult to do. So we can try and rank up in the round table. Now, it's obviously very risky because, again, the jewel could kill us. It has before. Um, we could use our influence to pass to the next round. Now, granted, you're less likely to die on these because they're like show jewels like demonstration jewels just to show that you're good enough to go to the next rank we use our influence to pass it lose a thousand glory 250 prestige prestige is good uh, i mean it's relevant right now but i mean 750 the difference between 750 and 500 at this stage is really irrelevant for us so i'm, I'm gonna go for the safe route just give us a few extra options you know hire a warrior commander we'll see if we can do that uh go on a warrior pilgrimage that would be very very nice things we do have leadership traits i guess we do need to be landed and again the win that might be something we can do when we get a castle still not still not in perfect shape let's go fight in the arena then caspar 21 they've all got 21 personal combat i guess because they're not they're not trained like we are doomed dead as dicks there we are bit more dual experience 260 with 81 a challenger very nice 62 versus our 81 i think we'd be fine now, I'm going to go for the premium my sword option, just because if we skip the dual engine, I don't know if we get the opportunity to surrender for obvious reasons. So if he does, yeah, we can admit defeat whenever. So if we get maimed, if we get wounded, we can bow out kind of gracefully. We lose our rank, but hey, we're not dead. That's the important thing. I'm, I'm still going to try and kill him, though. We shouldn't because it's dishonorable, but I'm still going to be as, as, as hard as we possibly can. Parry, great start. Aim for the head. Oh, shit. Your foe avoided the attack and struck back. That's not good. We're going to do a jump attack. This is a terrible idea. Shit, actually worked. And then extravagant. Okay, no no problems there. Parry. Fuck. Come on. Lunge. Nailed it. Nailed it. Boris, all of this training, it's finally showing. There we go. At long last, Sir Boris Donnessy Mog Von Archibald of the Han Hananid Imara. Oh, right, because we moved, right. Gains perfect shape. Fertility plus 10%. What we're really after here is not really too bothered, I will admit, about my boy. Uh, oh, my God, he's a sir? Sir Boris Doherty. Wait, was he always this? Did I call him Sir Boris or was he always that? Huh. That Well, that's cool either way. Um, yeah, 65-year-old Boris. A bit more sex appeal. Why the hell not? <laughs> I heard he's got an 8-pack. He's completely ripped. Okay. Bounty board. Come on. We need, we need 80 gold. Fuckers, come on. We could gamble for it. We could gamble for it. I can't. I can't yet. Not unless we get... If we... If, let's say we get um, ill or something like that. Say he falls with the flu or, you know, just has an old person accident. I don't mean shitting himself. I mean, like, falls over and breaks his hip. Maybe then we'll go gambling and sort of see what we get out of that. <sighs> you dumb fuck. Uh, perfect shape. Shame about his fucking eyesight, apparently. Everyone attended the spear throwing competition. Seems to be having a great time. They are partaking in the contest, conversing and laughing together. Perhaps the merriment is a bit too much as the spear is carelessly hurled into the field as someone is still out there. Is that my son? You monster. You monster. The sad music. Just as everything was going our way. Just as everything was going our way. My beautiful only son. A mangled mess. Mangled is minus three health. Severely injured is minus two health. Now, characters in CK2 start with base five health. He's Jewish, which is plus one. Um, I don't know if you could do some maths, but I think he's fucked. I think he's probably dead as all dicks here. Congratulations, Elmeric. Hope it was worth my son's life. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. You're ready to take down any man in a brawl. It's widely renowned. We are Sir Barristan Selmy right now, aren't we? 100 prestige. Thank you. Could do with the gold, though. My son is actually dead. Died a mangled mess. Pour one out for your boy, Archibald Lord Windsor, flipping Tofty the second of saxophone. Never got to see that land. Oh, my God. No man should outlive his son. No man, especially Sir Boris Donnerty Monk von Archibald. 
Unreal. So we need to nominate a new successor. What's she like then? Uh, she's okay. She's not terrible, but she's okay. And Chica Webweaver could be interesting. Uh, oh, but she's Grey Eminence. She's Grey Eminence. She's diligent. She's erudite. She's craven, but this character's shy, content. What about our last daughter? She's 12. Uh, I did start training her in Marshall as well because she had willful. She had affectionate, but it was still the best choice to go for, in my opinion. Um, so, and I'm also trying to play for that tactic. We've got an entry character. We've got a diplomacy character. We go for a Marsh character as well. Yikes. I think right now I've got to go with Ursula because she's got that diligent and she's got erudite. She's got gray eminence, which means people are going to like her more. That's the important thing. Yeah. I feel like I have to nominate her. Fuck. I can't believe that. Welcome, Ursula. Oh, here's the real question. We could move to like Damascus. They've got spare fifes. We can move to Tyrus. They've got a spare one there. We can move inside the Kingdom of Jerusalem the way that we kind of intended on doing it from the start and, and work up from that one. I feel like getting a fife in Damascus could be cooler because obviously this place is in the middle of nowhere. It's, it's just basically got a big target on its back with both room above it and Jerusalem below it. I'm very tempted to, to head south and buy a castle here instead because these guys would probably be a little more tolerant towards us because... Ah, oh, she's saying that. No, they're all French, aren't they? No, I don't mean that. I mean that as in, like, I thought they were our culture, but no, they're not. Um, okay. Is there any of our culture? That guy's Normand. This guy is... See, this guy's our culture. Right, that's where I was getting it from. Okay. Um, has he got any spare fives? Not really. Uh, to be fair, he's got Marne, which is obviously where Petra is, but I don't know that he'd be willing to sell us that. I think it has to be in his capital duchy, so I don't think that would be applicable. If we go to Damascus... I mean, flipping from Dutch to, like, uh, flipping from German, sorry, to French culture isn't such a big deal. And we could practice our religion in secret there, too, but it is still closer to our goal overall, rather than a random castle in the middle of nowhere. Hello. Water of the Blessed Mantle. Uh, oh, we can't, we can't use it anyway, because you have to be Muslim. Uh, we have the option to steal from it. Bear in mind, where is Marshall, so I, I, you know, I wasn't really surprised we could. Is there anyone else we could, could we steal from, like, hello? Hello? We can? The Holy Banner of Muhammad is like a quality five artifact because you can't equip it. We can steal it. You know, he has to. He doesn't like take it out to battle or anything like that. Now we could ship that to China. It being a quality five artifact, when we landed, obviously, but it being a quality five artifact would give us a crazy amount of opinion with China too. Um, are we on the Silk Road? We would be. Oh shit! Look at these trade routes. My God. Um, this this is the Silk Road, isn't it? Yeah. So we could go to China. Um. That's really tempting. Holy shit. Let's see if we can do it. We can always back out. We can we can start and back out. Uh, who will be my comments? My god, we actually can do it. We're going to try and steal the Holy Banner of Muhammad from the Sultan. Flee to Damascus and ship it off to China. That seems like war crimes. And you know what? We're all about war crimes on this channel. We can bring along our friend, Elmerick, uh, who is... We're looking for someone who's skilled, to be honest with you. Um, so we've got two options. We've got Elmerick or we've got our daughter. Seems a really good way to lose our air, huh? But she is at least skilled in diplomacy. He's skilled in, not a fucking lot, learning. So I guess he'd be able to identify the banner. Let's take our daughter. Let's take our daughter with us to go and steal the banner of Muhammad from the unsuspecting sultan. This seems, this does not seem very cash money at all, huh? You have arrived at his capital. As expected, it's heavily guarded. There's a group of guards at the main door and a servant's entrance at the back of the window near the stables. What is our chance of success? Pretty good for forcing our way inside, and that's not much of a surprise, given that Boris's, you know, entire lifetime of personal combat and martial, that's far enough. 78% chance of success. Do it, Boris. Pray for Boris right now. You, be you better be believing. <sighs> oh, my God. You scared the life out of me, you prick. Novice Adam. <laughs> Sorry, what is this? It's Hal Cal Pic Picui? Adam of... Oh, he's Aztec. Right, got it. Um, Fine. I mean, I feel like we'll kick his ass. Bring me my sword. Let's do it. Jump attack. Shit. Not a great start. Parry. Okay, good. Maybe we should be a bit more careful. Aim for the head. There you go. Oh, it's almost like that's a lot safer. Oh, shit. Yeah, we're annihilating now. Uh, dodge. Done. Easy. Oh, my God. We survived it. Okay. You've evaded most patrols to come up outside the treasury. Two board guards stand between you and your prize. Rush them down. Again, we can rely on Boris's brawn and lifetime of combat. Pose the servant and give them poison drink. Now, this is based on, uh, diplo as it says there, diplomatic abilities and finesse. Uh, so, intrigue and diplomacy, obviously. One of us will seduce them. So, we can send our... We could use our daughter as bait, which I don't really think I'm up for, to be honest with you. Rush them before they raise the alarm. Boris has trained his whole life for this. Do it, boy. 70%. You got this. <sighs> he do got this. 
he very much do got this. Now that you've dealt with the guards, you're free to search the treasure for your target. Time is short and the treasure is filled with documents, jewels, and miscellaneous items. So this is basically all down to whether or not we can find it. That depends on a little bit of everything. 52% chance of success. Split to cover more ground. Slightly on your administrative capabilities. So stewardship and our accomplice, who is shit, I guess, at stewardship. She's not great at all. Stewardship and learning is, is kind of crappy. Search carefully. Obviously, chance of getting captured with that one. Administrative capabilities and scholarly knowledge. So that's learning. 52%. It either, we either find it or we don't. Everything's 50-50. Oh, my God. Boris, I believe... I've never believed so hard in anything in my whole life. Do it. Do it, Boris. That's not good, Boris. Fuck. Oh, shit. Oh. We were so close. We were so close to stealing one of the rarest artifacts in the game. You shit. You've taken too long, and some guards have found you. Surrender and hope for the best. Uh, we'll basically be imprisoned. Fight your way out, but there's a lot of them. Depends on your combined physical strength. Now, we have high physical strength. Our daughter can't imagine... Minus 12 personal combat. Ah, shit, she's craven. She's also aberrant. Oh, no, sorry, she's sturdy. Um, 0.25 health personal combat skill plus 2. So she's an absolute unit, but an absolute unit does not a warrior make. Demand an audience with their liege. Uh, I believe there's a chance we could just get our head lopped off doing that, right? Now, hang on a minute. Yeah, 9% chance of us dying. Not a big fan of that one. Uh, and he imprisons our daughter as well. Surrender and hope for the best. We'd just get put in prison, and then we'd have to ransom ourselves out, setting us further back. Fight our way up, but there's a lot of them. What's the chance of that, then? So one of three options will happen. 45% chance of successfully escaping with wounded. 37% chance of gaining the trait wounded and being imprisoned. 18% chance of just being imprisoned. So we've got a higher chance of being imprisoned. But it's still very good. Well, it's not good odds at all. But it's not terrible odds, either. Demand an audience with their lead. So what do we get from this one? 45% chance of getting a levy transfer. He takes some of our levy. We're not bothered by that. Um, tax transfer. Again, we're not really bothered by that one at all. This one runs the risk of immediate death. 9% chance of just being killed, which is one of the... I feel like this is the, the sensible option. You know, lowest chance of anything bad happening. The other shit we don't give a shit about. Success dependent on your physical strength. That was diplomatic abilities and his personality. He's kind. He's diligent. He's frail. He's arbitrary. Ooh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. We survived. Oh my god, we survived. You know what? That's the second best outcome. Best outcome would have been stealing the banner. Second second outcome, surviving. Third outcome, I guess, would be, well, you know, imprisonment and death. Failed in your heist. We lose 250 prestige. That that was not a sure... That, that was not something we just got away with there, unfortunately. 250 prestige is, of course, massive for us. But holy shit, we cut... I could taste the banner of Mohammed. Not sure I'm allowed to say that. While casually strolling around the premises, as one often do, you come across Anoush sitting at her desk, overburdened with work. Let me help you, Anoush. Good luck with... Oh, we can't. We're just going to insult her. You fucker. What an awful man. Um, we're not going to help out the Reconquista. We're so close to glory. We need, like, what? 50 gold right now? Bounty board. Nothing. Damn it. I feel like we haven't had any, many job opportunities since we became his marshal, right? Now, don't get me wrong. I like being in a position of power, but it hasn't really done anything for us. And being in this realm that is falling apart very, very quickly, we're kind of on a sinking ship. Sorry, pal. We got it for free. We didn't lose or gain anything for being his marshal, besides potentially opportunity costs from being employed. So I'd rather maybe resign and see if someone offers to take us on a campaign again or something like that. Immediately. Okay. We missed out on a lot of gold then being his marshal. I didn't realize that was what was setting us back. We've hit the golden age of 69 right now. I figured it would be best to go for hunting focus so that we can try and get ourselves a hunting dog for the plus one health. Also, we get the plus one health for obviously picking the focus anyway. Just got to stay alive a little bit longer. Look, we're, we're like 15 gold short of being able to buy ourselves some land here. Now, we don't have to necessarily buy it here. I, want, I do want to move to Damascus. That'd be another potentially 50 gold on top of that. All we need is like one bounty or a couple more. Why don't we move to Damascus first? Are we even allowed to move to... Oh, right, because we're already from court right now. We've got to go home. Then we'll move to Damascus. They accept... Give us a job as the uh, South Sword, which chances are they will. Then we'll accept it. Ten more gold right there. Okay. So let's assume it costs us the full 50 gold. That's fine. We're also a master... Oh, becoming a, a master strategy. We're now adept to strategy, which is obviously very nice. This guy's nuts. What are we up to now? 27 Marshall from nothing. I'm so pleased. Well, obviously, it wasn't nothing. We had, like, we had the, the third best education, right? Because this was the son of the guy with no stats, no traits, whatever. Um, so we, we sort of came from nothing in some way. We were educated by a guy who had no skills at all. So this is, uh, I think, a fairly impressive turnaround on my guy. Actually, the wealth we're getting with this is so much quicker. A wife died. That was very unceremonious. Shit, well, that's a shame. 47. She died really young. Given that we're 70 and still out there on the battlefield. My God. Coward. That's what we call her. We call her a coward. Take the offer. 32 gold. Now we leave. I'm going to take your gold. Now I'm leaving. Goodbye. 
Okay, we need eight gold. And then I believe we can... Can we buy... Oh, we can't buy anything in Damascus yet? Are we not there yet? Hang on. Try now. Hang on. Bring, oh, bring my sword. Well, how strong are you? 71. Oh, shit. That's not good. Why are we so weak all of a sudden? All right. Why have we lost so much personal combat? Old age? Is that really what's done it to us? I guess it's got to be, right? 50... Oh, yikes. Um... Bring me my sword. We'll do that so that we can always surrender. You know? Not a great start. Uh, faint. Good start. Okay, quick, simple. Let's go for a dodge. We defeated shit. His age is catching up with him here. We need to retire. We absolutely need to retire. Right, so we're in Damascus. Two empty fives. Can I, can I buy that now? Why can't we buy one from you then? Um, why are we able to buy one there, but not from... We can still purchase holding from that guy, though. That's a bit weird. Uh, did, did I actually move? We did move. Maybe it just takes a second for it to, you know, pick up where we are. This is Dust's mileage. Yeah, it probably takes a little bit while to uh, to realize that we've we've shipped... Uh, we've, we've jumped ship over to Damascus there. Well, we've got our 600 gold, and we've got a bit of treasure hunting, too. So there's a chance of us getting... Can we get some armor from this? Yeah, we can get chain mail, which would be quite nice. Uh, landed opportunity. Hello. Uh, who are you? Different man entirely. Uh, this guy wants us to also make us Turkish and shit. Okay. Um, I'm going to decline that one, Chief. Bless me with such a letter extending. Just a random guy offering us land, though, which is quite cool. So there might eventually be someone that we're more interested in as giving us land, potentially somewhere in Jerusalem. I'm going to decline it. We still can't put an offering on Damascus, though. Uh, so maybe it's because they're at war. That's probably quite likely. So we'll wait for some peace to kick out. We can also go on an invasion. But we've got the money. Now what we've got to do is just wait for the opportunity to become available. Ah, shit. Oh, my God. In Lesbos as well? Oh, shit. Okay. Is this the second plague we've had? But anyway, we're still playing technically on the same save that the, uh, the, the first attempt was on. What was the name of the dynasty then? Extreme Testosterone, of course. How could I forget? That was on that dynasty where we had the plague on that one. Now it's come back for round two. My God. Maybe the difficulty is a little too high, huh? Um, okay, sure. So that's like there, right? Yeah, Hanna Lesbos is right there. So that's the bubonic plague probably rocketing straight towards us. We're going to be winning the first wave. So that's a bit frustrating. Um, oh, also, we're not home yet. So maybe that's also part of the reason why we can't uh, we can't buy some land. How about now? We, you good? We're up for it? Nothing. Nothing. You coward. <laughs> not another one. You're joking. Ursula, Olympia, Ophelia, Flora, Mary, a saxophone died attended to chamber business. Fuck. Okay. Uh, so what's our choice now then? We've, we've got, hang on, we've got, we've got these two. Uh, oh my god, what a choice. <laughs> this is bad. Holy shit, this is bad. Um, I mean, obviously we've got to go for Elizabeth, huh? Because if we go for Ulrika, we are, ah, she's got ambitious. What, what are you like again? She was like, uh, level three, level three inch web weaver. There are things we can do with that. There's a lot of things we can do with that. So I'm, I'm going to roll with it. I think that's okay. She could work with a plus six, deceitful plus three, companion plus one. I'll take it. It's not it's not nearly as good as those two characters we lost. But my god, there's nothing we could have done about that. That was Chamberbiz. There wasn't even Plague, which is quite frustrating. But it's just a quick reboot. And it's actually working. We're good. There we are. A new holding. Oh, thank god. I was so worried then for a second that I started with the official role in D2 Games guarantee of, not, of being a landed character by the end of the episode. And, you know, not getting it. Do we build? Oh, shit. We can build a city. Oh, that'd be weird, huh? Um, so not only can we play as a baron level character, we can play as a, a republic. Not a merchant republic, but a but a city owner. Which I think in some ways would be more sensible, because think of the gold we could get out of that. What do we what do we think, team? City or castle? This is another situation. I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. I think castle is all well and good, but it's something we've definitely seen. It'd be not really much different to playing as campgrounds. We won't have any land to ourselves. But we would still be part of the feudal system. City, though, as a merchant, that would be really weird. It wouldn't be like playing a merchant republic. Because, realistically, we wouldn't have that much power at all. We'd have a mountain of cash, which we could do for a lot of other things. You know, swaying people, buying favors. I mean, building all sorts of weird crap. That could be interesting. Um, I'll leave it to you guys. I'm actually just going to leave the screen exactly like this. We're going to hit the save and quit button. And we are going to come back to this tomorrow when we've all got ourselves a, a decision so whatever is the most upvoted one that is what i will go for and of course we're going to stick to this time but this time i feel like we earned it you know we've really lived our life being that sales sword we've we've paid our way forward it's going to cost us 600 gold rather than us just pressing a button this time and obviously gaining a whole county which seems a little bit uh it's a little bit weird that it's been much much harder for us to gain this barony than it has to gain a whole county in the holy land anyway hopefully you guys understand my decision anyway even if you don't agree with it thank you to 
the patrons for making the series possible in the first place. And my, my patron friends, my good buddies, we are getting to the stage now where I'm going to need some names for landed characters potentially within the Holy Land when we start getting our sphere of influence expanded, when we start uh, going our ways to try and grab a little bit more land. We're going to need some loyal vassals. So start thinking of some names. And when we get to that arc, I'll come and collect it from everyone. Thank you in the meantime to Alchemia, Anthony Golia, Suna Kirito, at Moses, Average Gamer 419, Bacon Kitten, Balik Strombo, Ben Hoffman, Chesty, Croesus, Derek, Donald, Fukunda Vasquez, Gogolus, Harik, Harry McGowan, Iguana Squad, James Shea, Jonah Waters, Justin Wallace, Kanan Carter, Michael Mullen, Morst... Morstrous, Nostrous, Necrofellon, Pelvis Presley, Rodin, Scott, Scan, Somnus, Shay, The One Ring, Tom Terratine, Troy, Ken, Tyler, Kendall, I can't, should I, should I restart? Big thank you to Alchemia, Anthony Gulli, Asuna Kurato, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Bacon Kitten, Valix Strombo, Ben Hoffman, Chesty, Croesus, Derek, Donald, Fukuna Vasquez, Gogolus, Harry McGowan, Harik, Iguana Squad, James Shea, Jonah Waters, Justin Wallace, Caden Carter, Michael Mullen, Nostrous, Necrofellon, Pelvis Presley, Rodin, Scott, Scans, Somnus, Shay, The One Ring, Tom Terry Team, Troy, Tyler Kendall, Tyler McClam, Vacuous Bacchus, Faragon, and William Green for their support at the highest of the high insane level tiers on Patreon. Big shout out to these guys for going above and beyond anything I could have expected to, for support with the channel. So big shout out to everyone here. Thank you for making the channel possible. And of course, uh, an olive branch, an equally big, lovely, nice, kind thing for me to say to you guys. What's the word for that? I'll think of it, I'm sure. Two, the following patrons as well for also allowing this channel to exist in YouTube, <laughs> especially in January, where the, the money, sir, it is dried up. Thank you to Uwu Daddy. Am I allowed to say Adam Person, Asaro, Adrian Elliason, Alex Bogard, Andrew Walsh, Andrew Wilson, Anchor, Astro, Attila, Betamus Max, Better Valerian, Blood for the Blood God, Brittany Lee, Buen Gun, Chris, Corgi Circus, Dapper Go, Don, Don Honey Two Seven, Emerald Beam, Foosh, Gabriel Van Ders, Gans, Genji Circle, Gothamo, Grey, Hashi Dumar, I am Sagittaire, I see the Great, Irotha, Jackson P, Jay Lara, Jacob Wolfie, Jason Sushu, Jose, Jubas Cross, Duran de Vries, Jessica Smith, Jill's Lucky Sister, Jilly Vondel, Joseph Beard, Justin Rules, Justin Plock, Justin Walters, Kevin Saunders, Lepus, Luan and Thomas, Luke Wallace, Manuel Bosich, Mustolt, Monty, Mosley Sampson, Munda Difflin, My Name Isn't Dio, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick, Olivia Kaiser, Organized Confusion, Pan Samu, Panther Pearl, Peyton Denisar, Kamar Ishmael, Wright Ace, Russian Oligarch Billionaire, Ryan Hooper, Sam Kears, Scaps, Shardul, Silkworm, Smirtworm, Smooth Octopus, Socrates, Super Nanny 089, Sweet Sea, Talar, Tony Laban, Volta, Voodoo Mumbo, Void Prince Kibo, Will Wade, Wilson Atef, Wolfie, Yellow 4, Yorkus, Zack, and Zetlock 2. Thank you guys for your support over at Patreon. See you all tomorrow for the continued adventures of a landless man, not a count. Okay, no counts here. Well, I mean, eventually will be a count, but that's not the point.